So we'll start off today with a quick review of string immutability. And uh, so we have just like a brief little main method here that doesn't have a whole lot in it. And what we're gonna do is we're going to put in here uh, some integers, int x equals seven and int y equals x. And uh, let me just turn this all off for a second. And what I want to know here is try to think of each of these integers as a box. So there's a box that's got a, the label X on it, and then there's, there's another box with the label of Y on it. And what I want to know is if I was to print X and Y right now, like if I go like this, And I just put that in there just so that there'd be a little space between the two so they don't come out next to each other. Uh, what would print out for X and what would print out for Y? Who wants to take a whack at it here? Miss Ria, what do you think? Seven for both. Because here what happens is it creates a, a box called X. It puts a seven in it. And then it copies that value, that value seven, into the Y box. Now, later on, if I change X, like let's say I go like this. Is Y going to change? Are they both going to be five now? Or is X going to be five and Y will retain the value of seven? Uh, what do you think, Mr. Pandali? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Okay, so you can see we have two separate boxes. And after this line of code is executed, they contain separate copies of the value seven. So Y has its own seven and X has its own seven. And so when you change the value in the X box, the Y value in, is not disturbed. And so you'll see if I run this now, X will be five. And, oops, where'd it go? Uh, X will be five and Y will be seven. Let's just look at that. You can see that right there. So now if I was to do a similar thing with dogs, I don't know if I have any dogs hanging around here. I probably don't. Let me just create a fake dog class like that. And uh, if I create some dogs now and I go dog uh, D1 equals new dog, and then I go dog D2 equals D1 like that. And now um, my question is, how many dogs do I actually have here, uh, Ms. Mitika? There's only one dog here, and the reason why is that I only use this new keyword once. And so now if I was to go and change the names of either D1 or D2, the other dog's name would change also because both of these variables are pointing to the same dog. So this is just a quick review of what we did last time in terms of the uh the difference uh, between objects and strings now we said strings don't work like this so let's just briefly talk about how strings do work if i go string s equals abc and then i go uh s equals s plus def like that the Java virtual, excuse me, the Java runtime engine does not go where this variable is stored and put DEF at the end of it. What does it do instead? Who can remember and tell me? Mr. Deguj, what does it do, sir? So it creates a string that has the DEF and then it changes the location for point ABC to the. Okay, so it creates a whole new string, and that whole new string it creates is ABCDEF. And because I did this S equals right here, it changes the string S from pointing previously to ABC and to DEF. Now this other string ABC is still sitting in memory for a while. Eventually the garbage collector for Java will come along and see that nothing is pointing to this string and it will recoup it in memory. So given that that's the case, let's try a slightly more complicated example. Let's say I have two strings like this. And now let's say I change one of them. Let's say I go, oh, sorry, I go S equals 
uh, Z like Z like that. And now my question is, when I print S and T, what's going to print for S and what's going to print for T? You discuss with your partner now. Okay. So this tends to confuse students, which is why I'm going over it. Mr. Mason, sir, what is your guess as to what's going to print here? You think it's going to print two Zs? I get that answer a lot, but that's not what's going to happen here. And let me go through and explain to you why. You can see that that's not what's happening. And now, to understand the whole crux of this string immutability thing, it's right here. If you understand this when you walk away today, you understand string immutability. Okay, so pay careful attention now. First, I've created this string called ABC. So the, in the memory, there is this variable S and it points to ABC. You see that, right? That's what's happened here. Now, when I go T equals S, both variables T and S are both pointing to that string ABC. So temporarily, I've created a shallow copy here. They're both pointing there. You see that, right? Now, when I go S equals Z, does it come over here and erase the ABC and put a Z there? No, it can't. Why not? Because strings are immutable. So what happens instead is that it creates a whole new string called Z. This other string, which is ABC, is still sitting there. Now, which pointer did I reassign? I reassigned the S pointer. So now S is pointing to the Z string. Where's T pointing? It's still pointing to ABC because it was before. And I didn't change it. You see that? So you see what's happening here is that when I create this new string, I tell it what's pointing to it. But T is still pointing to the old string, ABC. So now when I print them, it prints the, uh, the, the Z for S and the ABC for T. And that's what you're seeing here. And it's important to understand this nuance. Okay, does anybody have any questions on string immutability?